pretty good lift. It's uh, one that we'll use for, I don't know, maybe another six years or so. The category, top 10 things a judge should know about Ohio Mock Trial. By the way, Paul, uh, Blind Justice is my favorite superhero. <laughs> That's true. Here today to assist us, we have the uh, OCLRE staff. All right, so again, we've got the top 10 things a judge should know about Ohio Mock Trial. Kicking it off with number 10. Mock Trial teams have two attorneys, two witnesses, and one timekeeper bailiff. No communications are permitted between team members except the attorneys until the court has been adjourned. Teams have been practicing for months and are not to be judged on the merits of the case, but rather should be judged on their performance and knowledge of the proceedings. You know, Paul, I, uh, I used to do mock trial. Oh, oh yeah? How, how did that, uh, how'd that go? The team asked me to leave because, well, I always made a mock area myself. <laughs> uh, number nine. Judges should review the information presented to them prior to the pretrial conference. Judges should review the case summary, reference list, and the scoring rubric. During the pretrial conference, teams will submit completed score sheets, and each judge will receive one to use during the trial. Very good. Or as they say, oye, oye, mock trial judges now presiding. Moving on, number eight. Judges should use the score sheet throughout the trial. As the trial progresses, use the score sheet to grade performances on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best. At the end of the trial, your scores will determine an outstanding witness, an outstanding attorney, and a team that wins the trial. Remember to score based on performance rather than merit. Little known fact, I moved a strike in my sleep. Number 7. The flow of a mock trial is prescriptive and timed. The bailiff will swear in all witnesses at once following opening statements by the defendant and prosecution. The burden of proof determines who goes first. The bailiff also serves as the official timekeeper. Although there are three witnesses per side in the case file, each team is permitted to call two witnesses. Check the reference list for the timetable for each portion of the trial. And stop. It's gavel time. Number six. Check the reference list for rules and objections pertaining to Ohio mock trial. Attorneys are permitted to use notes, but not witnesses. Witness statements may be used to refresh memory or impeach per the Ohio mock trial simplified rules of evidence. Use your reference list to help with procedural rules, rules unique to mock trial, and common objections. You know, I always object. <laughs> Number five. Witnesses are bound by their witness statements. If opposing counsel starts objecting repeatedly, invention of facts, facts not in evidence or beyond the scope, you may want to consider that someone is being too creative and violating mock trial rules. Reasonable extrapolation is permitted on cross only when permitted by the question. Additionally, witnesses are considered constructively separated. Do you swear to stick to the scope, the whole scope and nothing but the scope? Number four, exhibits are stipulated as admitted. Only exhibits that are part of the case materials may be referenced and must be a clean copy on an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper. You can't handle the truth. Oh, uh, am I supposed to be Tom Cruise in this example? Of course, making me grumpy Jack Nicholson. Number three. Post-trial objections phase during first three minutes of deliberation. After closing arguments, the presiding judge recesses the court and the scoring judges retire to deliberate, which really just means adding total scores in mock trial. While the presiding judge entertains any post-trial objections, then joins the scoring judges in the tallying of ballots. During the post-trial objection phase of the trial, attorneys may communicate with the witnesses, bailiff, and timekeeper performing in the actual round. They have three minutes to present objections to the presiding judge. Use the provided summary score sheet to add up judges' scores, determine winners of outstanding witness and attorney awards, and determine the winner of the trial overall. But don't announce the winner of the trial to the students. You know, my lawyer tells me I am trapped in a penny. <laughs> I am innocent. <laughs> Number two. Material rule violations explain. During the post-trial objection phase, a team may make a material rule violation objection. For example, a team's opening statement went over by 30 seconds or more. 
if a majority of the judging panel feels there has been a material rule violation, which affected the fairness of the trial, five points shall be deducted from the offending team's score on each judge's score sheet. Consult with the coordinator at the site prior to issuing any deductions. And the number one all-time thing that a judge should know about mock trial? Have fun. These are high school kids who have been working in and out of class on mock trials since September. If they raise an issue you're unsure about, it's okay to ask the kids to show you the rule in the case file. Enjoy their effort, offer positive feedback, and show your support of their interest in the legal profession. And there you have it, folks. Top 10 things a judge should know about mock trial. Thank you for making Ohio Mock Trial a huge success, and good night.